A look at ICS for local government. Public works in action. An emergency can strike at any time and might require public works to collaborate with others on site. Just like fire, police, and ambulance, public works personnel will need to respond in a safe and coordinated manner. To do this effectively, these agencies need to use a consistent approach. The Incident Command System, or ICS, is used to command, control, clearly communicate, and coordinate emergency response. It's used around the world as an effective means for managing single and multi-agency incidents. ICS uses a number of key principles which guide response activities. The following modules highlight a few of these principles, including elements of safety and accountability, the five primary management functions, the process for assuming and transferring command, a flexible and expandable organization, and how incident action plans are implemented to provide a common direction. With ICS, any agency can effectively manage incidents that reach beyond the scope of their day-to-day -day work. ICS Module 1 – The Initial Callout In this scenario, first responders are receiving reports of a sinkhole and flooding in the city of Denton. Fire and police respond to the scene. Fire assumes the role of incident commander to address immediate life safety issues. The incident commander is the person responsible for all aspects of an emergency and remains in charge until the situation is resolved. They bring personnel together in a systematic manner, ensuring safety, efficiency, and accountability. The incident commander is easily identified by their green vest. The incident commander requests that police set up roadblocks to keep vehicles and pedestrians out. After determining there are no immediate life safety issues, the incident commander contacts dispatch and requests support from Public Works. Public Works dispatches a supervisor and four-person crew. When they arrive on scene, the supervisor reports to the incident commander for an incident briefing. This briefing includes basic information about the incident, the allocated resources, and the incident safety measures. Following the briefing, fire transfers command to Public Works, as it is determined that this is a Public Works incident and there are no life safety issues. The supervisor notifies dispatch about the transfer and puts on the green vest to clearly identify their new role as incident commander. The incident commander then transfers the incident command post to the public works truck. This is a safe location near the site where personnel can meet and make decisions. The incident commander sizes up the situation by evaluating the scene and identifying available resources. The incident commander decides to appoint a safety officer to oversee the safety of all personnel on scene. This person wears a red vest. The incident commander also appoints another person from Public Works as Operations Section Chief. This person is responsible for directing response activities according to an action plan. They wear an orange vest. This management team can now start to identify priorities and establish the action plan. ICS Module 2 – Establishing the Incident Action Plan Several departments are responding to a water main rupture and sinkhole in Denton. The Incident Commander, from Public Works, has gathered the management team at the Incident Command Post to conduct a meeting and develop the Incident Action Plan. The Incident Action Plan lists the current situation, incident objectives, and safety measures which guide response efforts. It outlines who is responsible for completing specific tasks for an operational period, which is a specific period of time for addressing the objectives. The action plan is developed in a collaborative way during the planning process. To start, the incident commander decides to appoint a planning section chief who ensures that the action planning process occurs. This person wears a blue vest. The action planning process includes 1. 
understanding the situation. Two, establishing incident objectives. Three, developing the plan. Four, approving and disseminating the plan. Five, executing the plan. And six, evaluating and revising the plan. During the process, all members of the management team offer their expertise. Together, they decide on the initial incident objectives, which may include shutting off the water supply, identifying other infrastructure that might be impacted, and dispatching a waterworks crew. As soon as all safety measures are in place, the incident commander gives formal approval of the incident action plan before it is disseminated and executed. ICS Module 3, Expanding the Response Efforts. Various personnel and departments are continuing to respond to a water main rupture and sinkhole in Denton. Led by Public Works, the management team has implemented an action plan, which includes shutting off the water supply, identifying other infrastructure that might be impacted, and dispatching a waterworks crew. The organizational structure can expand and contract based on additional resources and incident complexity. As the additional resources arrive, the operations section expands quickly to include two more crews, a traffic control team, and several pieces of heavy equipment. To ensure safety and accountability, effective span of control needs to be maintained in the organizational structure. This means limiting the number of resources that report to each supervisor. The span of control within ICS should be three to seven people reporting to one supervisor. As resources arrive on site, there's an increasing need to provide effective support. To do this, the incident commander appoints a logistics section chief to manage resources such as supplies, equipment, and food. This person wears a yellow vest. In large, complex events, a finance and administration section chief may be assigned to manage finances on site. This person would wear a gray vest. As response efforts grow in size, there is an even greater need for personnel accountability. To support this, the safety officer ensures check-in procedures are in place to account for the well-being of all personnel. In all incidents, the first priority should always be the safety of first responders. As the incident unfolds, the incident commander regularly brings the management team together at the incident command post. They review progress, revise incident objectives, and create new incident action plans each operational period until the incident is resolved. Once the sinkhole is stabilized and corrective measures are well underway, regular day-to-day -day functions will be assigned to resolve remaining actions. As the incident commander concludes the active response efforts, they will need to account for all personnel. As part of these demobilization efforts, all personnel should be informed of future directions and accountabilities. 